Welcome back to another episode of Pokemon Fire Red and Leaf Green. In the last episode, Red pretty much went off to a really bad start, but in this episode, he's gonna have to learn some basics. And, uh, in order to do that, we're gonna go to the bag. In the last video, we got this, um, thing called Teachy TV, and we're gonna use it. Now, this is pretty much what we're gonna be doing for this video, so if you wanna go uh, if you're not really interested in this, you can go ahead and skip it to the next video to where we'll actually continue our journey. But right now, let's watch some Teachy TV. Hey all you trainers out there! Hello trainers! Come on, let me hear you! Hello trainers! It's me, the Poke Dude. Today the Poke Dude's here to tell you all about how you can battle Pokemon. Say you're out for a stroll when suddenly a wild Pokemon appears. It's up to you to smartly use your Pokemon and use their moves to reduce the opponent's HP to nothing and claim victory. I'll show you how to do that in person and for sure. Alrighty, here it goes. Keep your eyes glued to the Super Poke Dude Show. So a cool little feature there. Also, it, uh, this is the highest uh, volume you can get on here. So yeah, if you have the, the speed of the battler gets to attack first. Okay, as I was saying, um, if you have your own uh, Fire Red or Leaf Green game, you can go ahead and plug it in. It looks like my Rattata was faster than Pidgey. Okay, can I please do a sentence while I'm explaining the audience real quick? The battlers take turns attacking and reducing each other's HP. Now, Rattata reduced the foe's HP to zero, so it wins. The Pokemon that took part in the battle gets EXP points. When a Pokemon collects enough EXP points, it levels up. Leveling up makes your Pokemon stronger than before. Okay? Well, did you get that? Even if your own Pokemon's HP fails to zero and it becomes unable to battle, not to worry. Just take it to any Pokemon Center and heal it. Alrighty, be seeing you. Remember, trainers, a good deed a day brings happiness to stay. The end. So, a cool new feature. Okay, if you guys can't hear what's going on in this, um, the audio well, I'm really sorry. This is as loud as it can get. I'll try and get it louder in the future, but right now it's just, um, hard to hear at the point. So, if you have your Fire Red or Leaf Green game still, and you ha still have the Game Boy Advance, feel free to put it on there and follow along, because chances are, I uh, this is, that's probably the only audio you can get. But right now... Let's keep going with the status problems. Hey, all you trainers out there. Hello, trainers. Come on, let me hear you. Hello, trainers. It's me, the Poke Dude. Today, the Poke Dude's here to tell you all about status problems. Status problems include poisoning, paralysis, sleep, burn. There are a couple others, but they really are trouble. Get any one, and your Pokemon may become useless in battle. You know, it hurts the Poke Dude to see a Pokemon suffer. So, what should you do if your Pokemon gets a status problem? Well, you got me to show you. Alrighty, here he goes. Keep your eyes glued to the Super Poke Dude Show. I wonder if he has these Pokemon for props. Like, they're actually trained. Oh well, let's see. Uh oh, my Rattata has been poisoned. My Pokemon is poisoned and it loses HP steadily. If a Pokemon develops a status problem, heal it right away. Using an item on a Pokemon uses up one turn though, not the opponent's turn. Okay. Yay, we managed to win! Poisoning or paralysis don't go away after a battle. If a Pokemon is poisoned, it loses HP even while you're walking. 
You should heal Pokemon of these kinds of problems right away. Use an item or try to get a Pokemon Center for healing. That wasn't hard, was it? Alrighty, be seeing you. Remember, trainers, a good deed a day brings happiness to stay. Okay. Alright, next up we have the type matchups. Hey, all you trainers out there. Hello, trainers. Come on, let me hear you. Hello, trainers. It's me, the Poke Dude. Does everyone know about type matchups? Pokemon and their moves all belong to certain types. For example, there are such types as grass and water. You need to consider the type of the move used to attack, and the type of the Pokemon that is hit by that attack. Depending on how those two types match up, the damage can change. You see, it depends on whether the type matchup is good or bad. If you don't know how ma type matchups work, battles will be tough. So let me demonstrate exactly what I mean. Alrighty, here it goes. Keep your eyes glued to the Super Duck Poke Dude Show. Alright, another Oddish. A little plain bubble. The move bubble is the water type attack. The targeted Oddish is the grass poison type Pokemon. The water type attack is absorbed by the grass type Pokemon. As a result, the move becomes not very effective and inflicts only half the usual damage. Oof. Oh, this is not good. The Absorb attack you just saw is a Grass-type move. Poliwag is a Water-type Pokemon, so Absorb becomes super effective, doubling damage. It's not going to be easy to win with this matchup. Let's try shifting Pokemon. Shifting Pokemon in and out uses up one turn. Now it's the opponent's turn. Butterfree is a bug flying type Pokemon. Against this Pokemon, a grass type attack inflicts only half the usual damage on a bug type Pokemon, and it also causes only half the damage on a flying type Pokemon. Therefore, Butterfree being a bug flying Pokemon only takes one quarter of the usual damage. Oddish is a grass poison type Pokemon. A flying or psychic type attack is super effective against it. One of those types of attacks will inflict double the usual damage. Okay, here we go. Yeah, we won. Okay. Is it possible to launch an attack that will inflict 10 minute damage? Does the opposing Pokemon pose a threat to your Pokemon? Is there any chance that it may have disastrous tough moves? Watch the type masters to gain the upper hand. Alrighty, be seeing you. Oh, for the cool type Poke Dude, awesome type kids like you match up perfectly. Remember, a good deed today brings happiness to stay. Okay. One more to do, and that's the end of the video, so it's going to be pretty short. Time to see how to catch Pokemon, even though we've been doing that last video. Hey, all you trainers out there. Hello, trainers. Come on, let me hear you. Hello, trainers. It's me, the Poke Dude. Today, the Poke Dude's going to show you how to catch Pokemon. Just imagine, a groovy Pokemon suddenly appearing in the wild. Oh, you want it? You just can't help it? Oh, you have to catch it? You gotta have it? Let me show you how you can make it happen. Alrighty, here goes. Keep your eyes glued to the Super Poke Dude Show. How does a Jigglypuff go in there? When you're trying to catch a Pokemon, don't throw any Pokeballs right away. First, you need to weaken it by reducing its HP. Okay. Okay, that should be good enough. But if it's possible, it would be best if the target has a status problem. For instance, it would be easier to catch if they were asleep or paralyzed. 
Mm, there's stands for as well. This will make the Pokemon a lot easier to cast. Oh yes, if you paralyze the Pokemon, you can't make it fall asleep on top of paralysis. In other words, you can't double up status problems, okay? I mean, you kind of can with the confusion type, but still. I don't know if that's considered a status problem. But then again, okay, let me throw my Pokeball. But then again, um, it does have like a full heal effect if you like hear it from the confusion, so yeah, okay. So there's Great Ball and S Ball that you can also use, but he's going to use the Pokeball just for basic reasons. Pretty easy. Before you throw a Pokeball, consider the condition and the type of Pokemon and pick the kind of ball that would work best. Alright, if your first Pokeball fails to catch the Pokemon, don't give up. Keep throwing Pokeballs, it's bound to work sometime. Alrighty, be seeing you. Remember, trainers, a good deed a day brings happiness to stay. It sure does. Alright, that's it for this video. Yes, it's very short, but we're all just going to do the TGTV. Next video, we're actually going to start our journey. So, until then, I'll see you guys later. Goodbye.